I, <clears throat> I want to give a small lecture about uh, the per periventricular cystic confusions. There are many names to these periventricular cysts. Subepidemial pseudocysts, another five, another periventricular cavitation, another four, another four, and there are at least another four names. In the literature, everyone who published an article regarding this cyst invented a new name. The aim of this presentation are to reduce a functional to the functional from 15 to four functional names to help you to distinguish between these cysts. Periventricular leukomalacia is the first group of the cysts I want to speak about, or PVL. Periventricular leukomalacia is caused by an ischemic injury to the white matter adjacent to the lateral ventricles. After cleaning by phagocytes, the lesions appears in, appear in the ultrasound as small cysts. Many retarda mental retardation or cerebral palsy invariably occurs in infants with large bilateral cysts. Even small focal unilateral cysts are associated with 50 to 80% risk of mental retardation or cerebral Palsy. Risk factors for development of periventricular leukomalacia are sepsis, meningitis in neonates or children, hypoxia, and hypoxia in the fetuses, including seizures. The first group is the periventricular leukomalacia, and in ultrasound, we should see the high above the ventricles or rostral. The rel relatively, they are far away from the ventricles. They are not adjacent to the ventricles. Usually asymmetrical, not round, not beautiful round cysts. Usually many cysts, and usually in the third trimester. Some example of this cyst, sagittal, a coronal views, Another it's in the neonet and histology of this cysts in ultrasound in utero. This is the ventricle, and this in cell trimester. Okay, this is the first group. The second group of cysts are the sub ependymal pseudo cysts. A ultrasound almost at the top of the ventricle and frontal walls. Almost at the tops, there is a sagittal section of this cyst, usually bilateral, small, elongated cysts appear in the third trimester. We call them pseudocysts because the tip ependyma, it's like a a placental abruption, or it's like a pedimemal abruption. It's, it's not a real cyst, it's pseudocyst. And we can see that there is no, no a structure of a cystic lesion. And third trimester, ventricular subepidemal pseudocysts. The third group are interventricular cysts. I call them conatal cysts in ultrasound. Actually, they are intraventricular. They are not periventricular in the anterior arm. In the moderate cysts, like small grapes in the anterior wall and in the third trimester. And these are the cysts, MRI. And in ultrasound, Uh, the fourth group, the most complicated group, is the ganglionic eminence cysts. 
Ganglionic evidence are transient proliferative embryonic structures of the ventral telencephalon, which are located on the lateral wall of frontal orbs of the lateral ventricles with slight extension into the temporal orbs. And there is a micro MRI of a, a, a fetus week 12 abortion, and here is the here the thalami, it's adjacent to the thalami, gangliotic eminence, gangliotic eminence. And usually the cells from the gangliotic eminence are travel perpendicular to the radial glial cells and creates the, the, the real cortex. And ganglionic eminence. And according to the weeks, week 15, very large, week 20, week 26, week 29, week 36, and about, about one year of life, they disappear. Ultrasound. The most important that in coronal views, they are inferior or caudal or low from inner lateral wall to the ventricular space, sometimes encircled by solid structure, might be single, might be many. If not secondary to bleeding or infection, first and early second trimester appearance. And the first to describe it in utero was, uh, for all, was uh, Italian Claudio Giolandino, in 201 in the fetus net, and he called it uh, striatal necrosis. You can see this cyst. And I, since 201, I call this cyst as uh, striatal cyst. It's another name. But the, the more appropriate name is the ganglionic eminence, and which was first described in the fetuses by fetal MRI by Regini from Italy. And he described this cyst. Another article published in 2016, the first to describe the ultrasound diagnosis of gangliogic eminence cyst is Prefumo also from Italy in 219, only three years ago. And here is ultrasound appearance of these cysts. And in my white it's clearer. This form is article. Actually, from 201, I have nine cases of, I call it them striatatis, but the proper name is G-Cyst. And all of them, at the bad prognosis, all of them were associated with other severe brain syndrome, like in this case, Rain syndrome, week 18, striatal cyst and necrosis. It was with holoposencephalus, week 15. And another case, week 16, with trisomy 13, another case which was secondary to brain atrophy, another case which was with abnormal exome, and it is encircled by its solid structure in some of the cases. Even today, many even the best sonologists cannot distinguish between this cyst and periventricular pseudocyst. And this is the case, a publication of one, to my opinion, one of the best brain, brain sonologists in the world. And he described, his lecture was about the, his article was about the periventricular pseudocyst. And he's, he gave this case week 16, which is not typical for proposalysis, which had a bad prognosis secondary to CMV, and he called them periventricular proposalysis, but it's, it's clearly G-insists. 
My first take home message will reduce the name from 15 to more functional to 4 PVL sub epidemiol pseudocyst sep intraventricular cyst conatal cyst and ganglionic amniotic cyst. Take home 2. The sep sub epidemiol periventricular cyst appears usually in this region. And here are the cysts. The conatal or intraventricular uh, anterior frontal cysts are uh, like grafts, appears inside the ventricle. The periventricular leucomalacia usually appear uh, above the ventricles. And ganglion eminence cysts usually appear in this region. These two cysts are transient. To my experience, disappear, always disappear without any sequela. And these two cysts, kind of cysts, uh, always had a bad prognosis. Thank you for listening. <laughs>